Okay, I think we're ready to go here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. And we're out here at my shelter. And most of you know that I took ownership of, of this uh, variable speed bridge port back in November. Just before uh, I shut everything down for my surgery. Um, and it's been sitting in here and I had a secondary cover over it so that uh, any sweating that went on in here wouldn't be dripping on it. Now I normally run machinery that's uh, that's capable of running anyway uh, before I take ownership of it and and this is one thing that just it, it was unplugged and it was sitting there and it was just uh, uh, an impulse buy one because of the condition of the ways the, the longer or, or bigger knee so that my square pattern without changing something on the on the clamp down or in the vise is much broader than the other one the other one had a longer travel on the table but it had a shorter knee this has a variable speed and i'll be swapping out some of the things the difference in this travel here um in fact the question always comes about what am i doing with the other um mill in there and that's already been promised to uh, dennis nolan and uh he might also be getting that readout with it because the travel difference between the two and I may have to pick up a new readout for this unit here. Um, I'll still put my travel dial on it and I'll put my, uh, my auto traverses and all of that. Now here's the thing. <clears throat> there was a rumor that this thing had uh, uh, clunk clunk or some kind of noise in back gear. That was just speaking from a third party. All right, And uh, so this is going to be a little interesting. What I've got you out here today is to go ahead and, and be here with me firing this off for the very first time. All right. I don't know who else besides me has a 50-foot uh, number 10 four-wire extension cord. And uh, I got some big gay, uh, I mean red uh, wire nuts to uh, put on here. And we'll go ahead and run this on into, I believe I can get to my main power box uh, from here with this cord so let me get this stretched out and hooked up at that end um, and we'll come back and uh, um, wire up this and then we'll flip the breaker and pull the switch and we're gonna see what this thing sounds like I think I got my oil can out here we'll make some make sure that we have oil in on uh, the areas that need to be oiled this head was upside down we turned it back right side up um, and uh, Let's see how bad or how good she really is. I'm just keeping the same color combination here all the way throughout the whole thing. Um, this is a reversible motor, so it would be just taking two of the legs and twisting it around. This is 223 phase. I put the zip ties on here because I want I want to hold this cord together just in case I happen to step on it, trip on it, or whatever. I don't want to pull these loose. Right now, this is only temporary, and it's only just to find out and see how it starts here. And we just want to be as safe as possible. I hate being shocked and or death. Both of those I hate. All right, um, let's, let's get you in another position. Let's get a little bit of oil in here. Um, my switch is off. And I'm just going to, I'll leave you right there until I go flip the breaker. Um, and just make sure that we don't have any spark up to this point. Okay. 
Good, no spark at this end. No light show here. All right. All right, we're good. Okay, let's uh, let's change positions here. Okay, I've got you over in the corner of the uh, the shelter there, and I think that's about as far back as I can get you in, and be inside at this angle. Um, okay, we said oil, and uh, we have one oiler up here. Oh, wait a minute, this thing's not quite tight. Okay. Uh, don't spill it now. <laughs> I got I, I drenched this thing with oil. I got to come over here on this side here just to Alrighty and um, I think that's that's about it now We don't know if anybody has twisted this knob or plate. We know that we're in we're in high here and um I don't have any crunchy crunchy. Um, we're disengaged on our feed, so nothing sh else should be moving. Our brake is fine. Here we go. I'm gonna flip the switch. <laughs> Make sure I'm not leaning against the machine or anything. And just holding the, uh, the lever itself and It's not quite smooth in there. We'll bring her on down. Remember, we're in the high range here. Okay, there's 500 RPMs. See if I can hold just a little bit of a load on it. Not without burning my hand too much. Brake works. All right, let's... Uh, Let's roll this into back here. I think I'm all the way in there. Okay. Let's climb on the speed. Okay, that's all the way up. 500 on low end. Um, we do have fuzz coming out of the, the fan here. <clears throat> so, I don't know if that's from insulation um, that got kind of down in there or if um, there's a mouse house in there. Hmm. All right, we're gonna flip the direction the other way there and we're gonna bring it down, run it back to high speed and run the cycle on the high speed here. Okay. <laughs> Do I want to go in there? No. Am I going to go in there? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> okay. Um. There we go. Okay. High end. There we go. We still have fuzz flying out of it.
4200 RPMs. Sounds like rat shit down at that end. <laughs> um, okay. We plugged it in. We answered our own question. We're going to tear into it. And uh, we have a manual for it. So it looks like we're in for a little Bridgeport adventure here. Okay, while we're plugging things in, let's go inside because I have another project that I've been dying to plug in and take a look at it. Okay, we come into the plasma table and bring in my unit here. This is, this is the carriage we've been working on. Okay, now we, we took apart the carriage. We removed the Z-axis slide <clears throat> that only gave us two inches of travel. And we took the lead screw for the Z-axis travel and we've extended the length in here of unused lead screw. That's what I, I determined that there was three inches of unused lead screw and I added three inches in here and now I have a full five inches of travel. Okay. And I've this is all stainless steel and I cut all of this material out on on this uh, plasma cam and then we came in and we milled the uh, the rest of this to uh, create a new mount <clears throat> which will be able to adapt our water-cooled uh, router head with the R11 collet on it. Okay, and I wanted to come in here and plug this in and test that five inches of travel out. Now I've already energized my carriage here. And all I need to do is come down here and grab this plug here, I believe, which will be the plug that will go into the Z-axis here. And with the push of the button up and down on my controller here, there we go. It, it dead ends on its travel here, and this is like a clutch in here, and it's set for pounds of, of push. All right, so that's how this, the stop works. And that's why this opening right here, creating that opening, the exact opening top and bottom right there, because that's where it hits there, and it hits right there on the top, okay? So that's, uh, that's how it determines its end of travel. All right, and we'll bring it back down. <clears throat> now, you notice the top here. I had to duplicate this, so I popped this off. I actually, when you pop them off, you actually break the little lip on there. But I went ahead and took a piece of 5 8 black Delrin and bored it out and then machined that groove so that I was able to go ahead and have a dust cover that's long enough to take that whole lead screw when it's in the uh, full down position. Other than that, everything is exactly stock and everything that mounts to the stock carriage would mount on my modification here. All right, so we're getting one step closer to doing 3D carving in on the plasma cam. All right, and the very last thing that I'm gonna plug in today is the last of the four bulbs that I just replaced over the lathe here. Now these are uh, super bright LED um, from LED.com and uh, <clears throat> these really are the uh, F32 T8s uh, plug and play uh, bulbs. Um, you can hook them up to the ballast or hardwire one into the other. They were on sale two weeks ago and John uh, uh, gave me a, um, a tip on them and I, I went ahead and I, I purchased them and then he right reminded me again because they have a Father's Day sale going on right now DAD 17 type that promo in there if you're shopping there um, and I did and with the promo and the special that they had a 25 count 
including shipping was about eight dollars and fifty cents a bulb okay i tried them i like them and i'm gonna go ahead and pursue that route on uh getting a lot of the other ones changed out in here all right until next uh video get her done